Hi guys, it's Keith Arkenberg Farms. It is uh, about mid-February 2020. And as you can see around me, it is completely frozen out here. We have been below freezing now for going on about five days. And we still have another five, six days on top of that. Maybe, I don't know, I, I've heard two weeks that we're actually supposed to be below freezing, which for us, That'll be the longest time period that we've been below freezing in about, I think, 10 or 20 years. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens this year with things like the lilies that are in the gardens because they don't usually like being that cold. Um, pests, how much we can zap them. Unfortunately, before it got really cold, we got all this snow, which is good for the ground moisture, but it also insulates the ground so it doesn't get as cold as it possibly could. My other big question when it gets this cold is my garlic. Cause it's all planted in landscape fabric and not your traditional bed of leaves and mulch and stuff. I'm kinda curious how that'll hold up as well. I mean, it looks like it's doing decent. It's got a nice little insulation of snow on it. So hopefully that'll, that'll make it good. But today, it's about the time of year when we pretty much plan on everything being done anyways. But now we're starting the next season, which means we've got the germination chamber up and running and we've got our grow rack going. So I want to show you today how I put together this grow rack. It's a great idea. I found, uh, I think I found this through the uh, farmer market or market garden success page, if I remember right. Oh yeah, and here's the uh, greenhouse from hell behind me. Every time I try to work on it, something doesn't work. Like, we'll just go right back here. Put it together, like I said, top of the door. Door hitters clear up there. Yeah. Ground post. Don't fit the hoops. What else do we have? Oh, hoop pounder. Broke. So this thing's been delayed multiple times. It's been quite an issue. Company we got it from has really been working with us, and I really appreciate that. It's been great. But I just want the damn thing done. I just got the other parts today, overnight in the mail again. It's been a disaster. But either way, I'm gonna take you inside and show you the uh, grow rack where we're doing all of our uh, starts for the time being. So now I'm inside here in the former post-harvest building, which is now turning into an office. That's the desk in the office chair behind me. Still got a bubbler tank I need to get out of here. That goes up into the new building. But right now we're housing our germination chamber, which this is up and running right now. Crock pot, temperature sensor, and the uh, fridge itself keeps a constant temperature. Check it out. Uh, I've got a video on it. Um, Please just look up germination chamber on my channel. You'll find it or how to build a germination chamber or something of that matter. But here's what I'm really talking about right now. This is a grow rack. This is coming very, very useful this early in the year because this whole building I'm in has really good insulation in it. I mean, we're just running a little tiny coil heater and this thing's set on like nothing. It's maybe halfway on low. It should be on low. And it keeps this place warm, barely any power usage at all. I mean, this whole building's eight by 10, if I remember right, maybe eight by 12. It's not a big building to heat anyways. But here's the uh, rack we're using. This is just your standard baker's rack. I'll turn you around and show you some clips of it real quick. And then um, trays, and there are lights. So that's just your standard baker's rack or wire shelf or whatever you want to call it. It's the adjustable type. It's got the little uh, plastic pieces on the edge that fit around where these rings are. You can see the rings right there. And then the shelf slide over them to actually make it fit. They're all NSF 
if anybody cares. We also have another one of these. We just haven't started putting it together yet because we're going to add more shelves to it down here so we can shelf out this whole entire unit. And then once we finally move into the propagation house, all these will actually go out into there. We can use both this rack and the other rack and have uh, racks for the post harvest area. But for lights, we're just using these simple little, the Barina T5 LED fixtures. They look like this. Okay, here's a box right here. They are Barina LED T5 integrated fixtures. And I got these off of Amazon. I think the box of eight is around 40 or $50 if I remember right. The great thing about the lights, they're four foot long, which that's the width of our baker's rack. And this rack is actually only 18 inches deep. I would have preferred to have a 24 inches deep rack because the one problem we run into is that they sit on the front and back rail and there's actually a gap underneath here. So the, the trays actually sag a little in the middle and when you move them, they drop and then you gotta kind of wiggle them back after you water them to get them back up because that way you set it level. Now I do have this on wheels, which it comes with legs, and that allows me to actually level the unit in here because we're bottom watering right now, and it's very, very important that that tray stays level so the water is even across the tray of the starts. Otherwise, you end up with spots where stuff dies off. Now, to set this up, very very easy these lights come with the single stick which is the light unit itself it's a light bulb and then a backer and then you get a whole bunch of these plugs with cords so like here's one it plugs into here comes out we'll follow it around and it comes back up and goes into here and the length is just right to where the plugs themselves actually hang in the unit. Very, very handy. Here, we'll shut one off here. See if we can get a better look at the lights themselves. There we go. So this bottom level, we got one, two, three, four, and it looks like we got a full five in here. Now I found for most of our crops, anything that's a vegetable that's gonna go out in the field, have to have five lights per rack. So we do one in the center, and then we move out two triangles, put another, move another two triangles on the edge and put another out at the end. If you have a 24-inch rack, that's going to change. Just get them evenly spaced. Um, with this, I'm using two different colors of light, which is really hard to see. We'll turn you around. There we are. You can see we've got orange color temperature, and blue color temperature. I cannot remember which one's which. I think one's 6400 and one's 7200 or 2700. I can't remember. But they're on both sides of the spectrum. They have a middle one as well, which I'm not so sure really matters. And since these are all in vegetative state growing anyways, I believe the blue light is better. I don't know. This is just what I ordered. All the new ones I did get are all the blue ones to complete this. But you put five per shelf for the microgreens originally. You can do just three. So I've got some little microgreens here. These are going to be some grow your own microgreens. We're all selling live. I don't know. I haven't quite figured that out yet. But for these, you only need, you can do the full 10, 20 trays on here. You only need three lights per shelf. And you're going to increase the space. What I found last year when I was doing this, get back in the light, right, is that if I did not put these literally into the light, I mean, I want a little bit of a gap, not much. I mean, they don't really heat up. They're not gonna burn the plant itself. But if I don't keep them right underneath the light, they got leggy. I found out with three tubes, they got leggy. Four tubes, they got leggy. Finally, this year I used five tubes and we got really, really, really good plants going. Turn you around. There we go. Look at those starts. Those look really, really healthy. You got really good 
start. A little spotty germination here and there. And some of them I think I might have killed because it was out of level originally. So I thought they were watered, but they weren't. I just watered that one, so I'm not going to pull it out. The one thing you get is right here along the edge. They'll get a little bit leggier because they're not right underneath the light. They're right in the center of all the light. They also do here like these down here. You have some weird things with their leaves. You kind of see how their leaves are curled under. I believe they're doing that because they have so much light here. They don't even put their leaves up to go towards the sun because literally the light is all around them everywhere. And there's my onions. They're doing real good too. And here you can see a little bit of stretching in the beets, but not much. Kale's doing great. It's actually getting up tall. I'm going to have to move it down and give it a little bit more space. But I mean, let it start in here. You'll never have to worry about it. I actually have this spaced. If you count the rings, it's here. You got one, two, three, four. So we'll do that again. This one's here. One, two, three, four is where this next one is. So there's actually five in between it. It's basically what this is standardized at because there's a double ring there and a double ring there. I'll come down here and show you. So there's a double ring. So my shelf top is there. And you come down five to the next double ring, which is right there. It's harder to see because that's actually a junction. So that's my next double ring right there. And you can just set it up and repeat all the way up the shelf. One thing I forgot to include was the cost of this. Um, these Baker racks are about $120. You get one, two, three, four, five, six shelves. And you can get, oh, basically five because you need one on top. And then lights are, I want to say they're about $50 for a pack of eight of the blue ones. And then it's like 40 something dollars for a pack of six of the orange ones. So you got to do the math and get them up. You need four per row. So if you do five rows, that's 25 lights divided by eight, which is roughly three packages. So there's about $150 worth of lights here. It's kind of pricey. And a hundred and twenty dollar grow rack. So this is three hundred dollars basically right here just to get out of the gate. And you get one, two, three, four, eight, twelve. You can potentially get sixteen trays on this rack, which is great for a lot of farms, but we gotta double this thing down because we need a lot more space on this rack. All in all, has been pretty useful. Last year I actually had it in the hallway of my house and I had moving blankets on both sides of it so it did not light up my house because this thing is actually extremely, extremely bright. I mean, it's next to the window there. It lights up the whole driveway at night. I've got it set on a timer to turn on, the, on and off these lights and it's set, I think I'm at 14 hours on right now and the rest off. Or maybe I'm at 16 and 8. I don't remember exactly. It doesn't particularly matter. You just need more light than your 10 hours or they just really don't grow. Um, one thing to note with these lights, you can only chain eight of them together. So you're definitely going to need a power strip and to use the cords that come with them. Another thing to note is when you get down to the end, they include these hard plugs. You can just use one of those to plug into the end. And I just put some wire nuts on the end to cover over the wires so we don't have to worry about getting shocked there. And basically that's it. I mean, it's really simple to set up. I mean, you gotta put a lot of wires on it. They come with all these, so there's not a problem. They also come with the shutoffs as well. And just, you know, string together. Eight in the run with one of these end pieces, what I use them for. Start another one, plug them in. I mean, we can turn them off right now. That shoots, shuts off the top. And then we got the middle one. Which has only got five on it. No, it's got a seven on it. And the bottom one's just got five on it. So, hope you all like what you saw today. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you all. Have a good day.